My name is Kevin Fernandez, and welcome to my channel, Gamers Genie. Today, we're going to learn the puzzling cat game, The Isle of Cats. This one to four player game designed by Frank West and published by The City of Games. In this game, it is your job to get each of these cats off the island and to safety on your boat. However, there's a catch. They all prefer to be kind of next to each other in their own family groups, and they don't really like being around their other family groups. Uh, will you be able to fit all the cats on your ship and sail them to safety along with a little bit of treasure along the way? Or will the island sink and all the cats with it? Find out as we go to the table and learn how to play the Isle of Cats. Place the island in the center of the play area. Red cat side up. The areas on either side of the island are known as fields. Place the Vesh boat on the five space of the day tracker. Place the common treasure below the island. Make sure to use five of each tile for a one to two player game. Since we are playing a two player game in uh, moving forward, I set it up for a two player game. Use eight treasures if you're playing with three players and use all 11 for a four player game. These are limited, so when you run out, you may no longer take common treasure. Place six Oshak tiles below the common treasure. Place all wooden cat pieces, single and five piece fish in the supply. And I put them all in these little glass bowls for easy access. Shuffle the discovery cards and place them in a face down pile and we'll put them right down here or we'll put it right here. Place the permanent basket tokens below the discovery deck and we'll place it right here. Place the discovery bag somewhere where all players can reach and for now we'll just put it off camera. Each player receives one random boat red cat side up and one permanent basket green side up. Randomly decide who goes first. Then, beginning with the per that person, go around the table and have each player, one, choose a color by taking their favorite cat figurine. So, you can choose between purple, green, yellow, red, and blue. Place the chosen cat figure on the island in turn order. So, since we're playing a two-player game, most likely Jordan will be the blue, and I will be the purple, so for example, if Jordan's the first player, she'll go right here on this top paw print, and I will go here on this secondary paw print. I'm gonna put this off to the side. The start player should draw tiles at random from the discovery bag, placing two cat tiles, not including treasure, per player in each field. It should be eight cats, four per field for a two-player game, 12 cats, six per field for a three player game, and 16 cats, eight per field for a four player game. So, since we are playing a two player, we need to do eight cats. So we got one, one, two, two, three, three. If you find a rare treasure, place it by the common treasure under the island and continue drawing tiles. Rare treasures do not count towards the number of drawn tiles. And that completes the setup. You're now ready to come to the rescue. Each player takes 20 fish from the supply. The explore phase is split into two parts. Number one, selecting discoveries or choosing cards you may want to use. Number two, accessing discoveries where you will choose and pay for the selected cards you wish to keep. The starting player should take the discovery deck and deal seven cards to each player, face down. These represent the things you can discover on your journey. Each player should pick up their seven cards, look at them, and select the two they wish to keep. So for example, I would wish to keep these two and put them face down in front of me. Placing their chosen cards face down in front of them. 
Each player should pass their remaining cards to the person to the left. With the new cards passed to them, players should repeat this process two more times, choosing two cards to add to their pile, then pass the remaining cards. Finally, each player will be passed a single card, resulting in each player having a pile of seven face down cards. Each player should pick up their seven cards and choose which to keep. You may keep any combination of cards as long as you can afford to pay for them. In the top left corner of every discover card, there is a number. This is the price you have to pay. So this brown card costs five, this one costs three, this one costs, this is one, two, 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 two. If you wish to keep a card, you must pay the cost in fish. Once you have selected the cards you wish to keep, add up the total cost and return that many fish from your personal pile to the main fish supply. We'll talk why you should be cautious about that later on. Place the cards as you decide not to keep in the face down discard pile next to the discovery deck. So, like so. Each player should check their hand for private and public lesson cards. And that would be uh, this blue bordered card right here that they have on the table face up in a place all players can see and declare the public listen to all player lessons to all players. If the public lesson says to pick a color, the player playing the card must declare a color when it is played. So for example, this lesson card is a pick a color card. So the player would then say the color they wish, take the meeple that has the color matching to the one they just declared and then place it face up in front of you for all players to see. Each player must place all of their non-public lesson cards in a face down pile next to their boat. The card should be displayed horizontally so that the other players can easily count how many lesson cards each player has. At the start of the rescue phase, players will in turn order choose which rescue cards they wish to play and place them face down in front of their boat. My boat is off camera right now, so this is the card. I'll place it face down in front of my boat. Once all players have chosen their rescue cards, all rescue cards should be revealed simultaneously by all players. The speed value of a card represented by the number of boot symbols, each player should tally how much speed they have from the rescue cards they have just played. The order of the cat figures on the island will be rearranged by how much speed each player has. The fastest player will be the first in line at the top of the island, and the slowest player will be the last in line at the bottom of the island. This change in turn order immediately affects any cards played from this point onwards. So let's say Jordan played one that was one high. So let's say I played one that was one higher, like this one, and Jordan only played a, a card with a speed value of two. So then I would come up here at the top and Jordan would be down here at the bottom. This change in turn order immediately affects any cards played from this point onwards. In case of a tie, the players who have the same speed maintain the same turn order in retaliation to each other. So again, if Jordan and I uh, did it again and it was tied, I had three and Jordan had three, then Jordan would just stay up here at the top and I would be still down at the bottom. Beginning with the start player, each player takes turns to rescue cats until everyone passes. You may only rescue one cat each turn, but you may have as many turns as you want until you either run out of fish, baskets, cats, or decide to pass. Once every player has, in turn order, had an opportunity to rescue a cat, play returns to the start player, and this process continues until everyone has passed. To rescue a cat, each player must have a basket and enough fish to lure the cat in. Cats in the field to the left of the island cost three fish and cats to the right of the island cost five fish. This is shown right here 
on the island. When you rescue a cat, you must spend the required fish and place them in the supply pile and use a basket. So, for example, if I wanted to rescue this cat right here, I would have to spend three fish. So I take one of my fish and then I would place them on my board thusly. If you are using a permanent basket, you should turn it over to show it has been used. If you are using any other type of basket, like on this card, you should discard the card to the discard pile. So I still have more fish, so I can spend five, discard this card, and take this cat and place it right here. If you want to rescue cats, you are going to need a basket to carry them. When you rescue a cat, you must immediately place it on your boat, like I did, following the tile placement rules before any other actions are performed. Once both the fields are empty, the rescue cat phase is over. Any rescue cards that have been played must have not been used are immediately moved to the discard pile. Note, broken baskets must have a combination of two broken baskets in order to use them. So for example, I have two sets of broken basket cards. So that means I can actually rescue more cats. So I can spend this five and rescue this cat. And I can spend this three, discarding one set of my broken baskets, and I can grab this cat and discarding these two baskets. Also, a little side note, if you cover up a treasure map, like this one right here, you get to take a common treasure from the pile, like so, and place it on your board touching one of your rescued cats. The rule, the only catch is it must match the color of the mat. The cat must match the color of the mat on your board. Starting with the first player, each person takes turns to collect their rare finds until everyone passes. You can only play one card each turn, but you may have as many turns as you want until you either run out of cards or decide to pass. Once every player has in turn order had an opportunity to play a card, play returns to the start player and this process continues until everyone has passed. When you befriend an Oshax or take a treasure, you must immediately play it on your boat following the tile placement rules before any other action is performed. So I have a treasure card right here which says I can take any two small treasures or I can pay a fish and take two common treasures. So the small treasures are this little square one right here and this one right here and the common treasures are this and this. This doesn't count because it is a rare treasure. So I will take the small treasure, take this one right here and I'll place it right here following the rules of touching. So as you can see it's touching my purple cats. Then I'll discard the card. After that, I also have an Oshax card. The Oshax are a little more different than your standard cat. So how that works is you take one, you place it on your boat, then you can take a meeple. So we're gonna take the yellow meeple and we're gonna place it on here. So this Oshax is now considered a yellow cat. And they remain like that for the rest of the game. At the end of the day, any cats that were not rescued from the field flee and should be placed back in the box, like I did so. They will not be needed again. Unclaimed treasures should remain below the island and are not returned to the box. Update the tracker by moving Vesh's ship one space. If Vesh's boat reaches the hand symbol, like so, Vesh has arrived and it's time to set sail. Proceed to scoring. Otherwise, each player should flip their permanent baskets back to its active side. And the next day begins. Any fish or cards you get to keep and use in the next day. Any time cards can be played at any time during a day. When playing an any time card, the player should declare they are playing 
the card and fully resolve it before any other actions are performed. If two players wish to play anytime cards at the same time, then you should resolve the cards in order based on the turn order track on the island. So I have this anytime card right here. I gain two fish for, an, for each Oshax on my board. But Jordan also has an anytime card where she gains two fish for every cat of uh, purple on her board. Well, Jordan is ahead of me on the track, as you can see right up here, right here. And so she gets to resolve hers before I do. Once that's done, you put it face down in the discard pile. At the end of the game, players should add up their scores. You get minus one point for each visible rat on your ship, minus five points for each room that has not been filled. You get points for each cat family you have. If you have a family of three cats, you get eight points. Four cats, you get 11, five cats, 15, six cats, 20, and seven cats, 25. If you have eight or more cats in the family, you score an extra five points for every additional cat in the family. And there's a reminder right here in the bottom left corner of your scoreboard, so you can use it as a reference as you see fit. You get three points for every rare treasure on your boat Common treasures do not score points. Reveal each lesson card you have. If you have completed the lesson, then add those points to your score. And once again, they look like this, like this blue card right here. Check each public lesson card and add the points from any completed card you score. The player with the highest score wins. In case of a tie, the player with the most fish wins. If the tied players have the same number of fish, then both players win. And that's all you need to know to play Isle of Cats. If you have any questions about this game, please put them in the comments below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to be notified for videos just like these. If you're a really big fan of the channel, consider becoming a Patreon supporter on our Patreon page. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. I would now like to take the time to thank our current Patreon supporters. Your donations mean a lot to this channel and it's because of you guys that we get to keep doing what we do. Be on the lookout for our upcoming gameplay video on the Isle of Cats. But until then, thanks for the views. Mm -hmm.